if you surround yourself with people who are able to find every scripture and every logical reason to explain to you why it is not necessary for us to pray every day because you know it shouldn't be uh, a routine thing it needs to be a relationship it needs to flow naturally um, you know God knows us and you know whether or not we pray he still loves us if you're surrounding yourself with those kind of people, you're not going to pray. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy, if you're new here, and I create content on this channel to help women recharge, repair, and refresh spiritually, mentally, and physically. So for today, I wanted to focus on something that I think is just really top of mind for me. You could say I have a burden about this, and it's prayer. If you ask me, I think that there are more Christians who want to pray than don't. I just think that. So the fact that a lot of us don't pray like we should, I don't think it's really reflective of the position of our heart. I think that in our hearts, we actually want to pray. We actually want to pray more, right? We want to show up more in our prayer corners. But for whatever reason, we don't like we should. So this video is going to literally just be helping to build that foundation for you. When we look at the life of Jesus, you know, it's very clear that prayer was at the core of his ministry and everything that he did on earth. So he started out his ministry going off into the wilderness to be tempted. That time was a time spent praying and fasting. And then even in the, in the course of his ministry, the one thing that his disciples, like after watching him for a while, the one thing that his disciples wanted to you know, call him aside to ask him like, you know what, teach us. They asked him, they said, Lord, teach us to pray, right? So it just shows you like that must have been something that was very prominent in the life of Jesus and many times there are actually points in the scripture where we see that you know he would suddenly leave the crowd leave the multitude leave his disciples and he would go off maybe into the mountains or somewhere and he would go to pray so this was something that was very critical very important to his life and his ministry even at the very point of his life where he was about like giving up his life for the you know reason he came on earth and he didn't want to do it because it was beyond him he was still praying so I do see this as the foundation of everything that you know we will ever do here and when we look in the bible i'll leave the the particular verse on the screen because i can't remember the verse off the top of my my head right now but the verse of that bible says men ought always to pray and not to faint right when we look at the temptation that jesus came across in the wilderness and you know the devil was tempting him to turn stones into bread you know he was quick to say ah man shall not live by bread alone that is Mm, yeah, bread is cool or whatever, but of the many things that man will leave on, bread is probably not top on the list of priority. But when it comes to prayer, Jesus is literally telling us men ought always to pray and not faint. What does that tell us? Basically, on the priority of what sustains man, prayer is here, bread is here. So that's the reason why I want to take the time to talk about prayer for the next few videos and sort of build that foundation and hopefully light a fire in your own life so that you can take charge of your prayer life and see, you know, a lot of growth and, um, you know, even the re results in your own life of spending um, all this time in prayer. So let's get into the video. So the focus of this video being the first in the series is basically going to be helping to create uh, an enabling environment that helps you pray. So the first thing that I wrote down as far as creating a habit of praying, a daily habit of praying, is making sure to create it, make it a priority. It has to be a priority. If it's not a priority for you, there's a very big chance that it's not going to happen. And one of the ways that you can make it a priority is actually setting aside time for it. So it's not something where we say, oh, I, you know, I make it a priority to pray at some point before the end of the day. You know, that's like, I, I would say halfway there. If you want to fully commit, right? Like really be in this thing, you need to set a time. Because what I found, at least for me as a mom, as a wife, um, as an employee, right? I have a job and a business owner. If I don't make time for it, there's a very big chance that I'll get to the end of the day and I haven't actually got the time, had the time to pray throughout the day. So this is something that you're going to need to take charge of and be very deliberate about setting aside time for it. Again, I mentioned Jesus earlier. I said this was something that he did all the time. Jesus would take out time, lead people, go off into the mountains and pray. He didn't wait to be given time off because sometimes we'd see that like he'd come back and like a bunch of people are waiting for him. But Jesus knew that there was no way that he could perform or do his ministry the way that it needed to be done if he didn't spend that time with the father 
right? So same thing for us, you know, as busy as we are being amazing wives and moms and, you know, business owners and boss babes and all of that, it's very important for us to create that time for prayer. If you need to set an alarm for it, do that. I do. So I put an alarm, no matter how tired I am, I have to wake up for it. And it actually guides the time that I go to bed the night before. Because if I know I have to be up early in the morning to pray, then I have no time to be lazing around watching Netflix. Second tip, I think I actually already touched on that just a little bit, but the second tip is choose the best time of the day that works for you. Now, there was a time when I, I wondered if it would work for me to do like my prayers at night. And when I tell you that a lot of the times, <laughs> at the end of the day, I just fall in the bed. I fall in the bed because I am tired. So yeah, I just know that it can't work for me. Like by the time I clock out from work at six, then I have to attend to my family. I have to attend to my kids. I have to attend to some business matters. Let me tell you, the likelihood that I will fall asleep is very high. So chances are I'm not gonna get to pray if I put prayer at the end of the day in the night. So at night, yeah, I still get to do the short prayer where I just like, you know, acknowledge God for the day and place anything that's, you know, in my heart as a word before him and things like that. But when I'm talking about really spending time in the place of prayer and digging deep, I can only do that in the morning. So figure out what time of the day works for you based on your lifestyle and based on your, I don't know, your habits, your preferences. Yeah. And I think it'll help you show up and be consistent with it. The third thing that you can do is not just, you know, look at prayer as like a box that we tick where we just like do it and it's like, whoo, I'm done. <laughs> like I met the requirement for the day. I'm out like, no, don't nobody bother me about this anymore because I'm done with it for the day. No, I think that a good thing that would help your prayer life actually have life in it is to weave it throughout your day. Let it be a part of your entire day. So how does that mean? Or how does that look? Or, you know, what do I mean by that? It's actually letting it be a conscious part of your mind. So it doesn't mean that like, once you pray in the morning or in the evening or whatever, you're done. Say you're doing dishes. Like, what are you using your time for? You pray. Something that I enjoy doing is, you know, using my drive time, like when I'm driving to maybe the grocery store or taking the kids to school, you know, when they allow me to hear my own thoughts <laughs> is praying right in my mind. So it doesn't mean that like, oh, now that I filled up my quota for the day because I showed up in the morning, I'm out like, see you all. No, it's just a state of being. It's a state of mind. So weave prayer into your day. It'll keep your heart on Jesus. It'll keep your heart ready to pray. It'll One other thing that I think that is very important for us to do, like when we're looking to actually build a habit of prayer. And I think this should have been the first. Um, I think the most important, this is actually probably the most important one is adjusting your mindset about prayer. So I'm not going to lie to you. I know for the longest time, prayer felt to me like, oh my God, like what are we going to be doing in there? Because I just didn't know what I was going to do there. Like for me, like if I prayed for like a couple minutes, five minutes is like, okay, you know, so adjusting to like a lifestyle of prayer. I think it took quite some work and that would have to be the first thing. Like you have to change your mind about it before you even can like be successful with it. And how do you do that? It's to begin to see prayer differently. Don't look at it as a chore. Don't look at it as a, a sentence that's being pronounced over you, right? Look at it as a lifestyle. Look at it as a relationship building exercise. Let's say two people in a dating situation or even a friendship building situation. How does it start? It starts with just talking to each other and that's really what prayer is look at it as a chance to build a relationship look at it as a chance to get to know this person when you show up on a date with somebody you just met it's supposed to be exciting you're supposed to be learning new things about this person you're supposed to be trying to figure out what y'all can do together to spend more time together and so i think that we kind of need to approach it from that perspective and it'd take i would think the burden of like oh what do i pray about show up just show up that's it start with showing up how do I mean by showing up? I mean, literally taking yourself there and just sitting there. Last year when I was going through a lot of grief and I just couldn't be, I didn't know how to get back into prayer because I just felt too broken because it, it felt like the biggest thing in my whole life had been taken from me. Like the, the ground that I was standing on was pulled off. The covering over me was yanked off. The pillar that supported the structure of my life was taken from me when my dad passed. And so I just didn't feel like I could show up in the place of prayer because I just had nothing to say. I had nothing to say about questions. And so that happened for a while. And eventually I realized, you know what? This is not really who I am or who I want to be. I do know that I'm in pain. I know that I'm in grief, 
but the person that I am seeks a relationship with Jesus. And so what did I do? I literally just showed up there. That was it. So for days I would show up there and this is not me at the beginning of my prayer journey. So I would show up there every morning and just sit. Honestly, I would just sit there and whatever came to mind, I said it. If all that could come out of me was tears, that's what I offered that day. If all that could come out of me was questions, that's what I offered that day. If all that could come out of me was just being angry at what happened, that's what I gave. Why? Because it's a relationship. And the person that I'm here talking to cares about what's going on in my life, cares about me. And I needed them to know, like I needed God to know, like this is where I am. When you build this relationship that comes from, you know, that prayer habit you you formed, you will not let it go. You will be willing to fight for it. And that's why I was willing to show up even when I didn't have the words. I just wanted to go there. So look at it as an opportunity to build a relationship, not as a box to tick or a requirement that must be fulfilled so that you don't go to hell. No, you'll go to heaven. <laughs> you'll be just fine. But this gives you that opportunity to build a relationship with your savior. And so the next thing that I want to share that I think is very important is to build yourself up in the place of prayer. And what do I mean by that is start with where you are. Start small and then build it up. A mistake I think a lot of us make is when we go in there because we've seen someone and we see what their prayer structure or their prayer life or prayer time looks like and we think like, I'm gonna do this. So we go in there hoping to hit the same level of, would I say, prayer uh, time that a person has built over the course of what, I don't know, 10, 15 years and we're hoping to build it in a week. It's going to take more than that. So I think it's very important so we don't wear ourselves out to build small. God is fine with whatever it is that you can do at the time. Now, you obviously don't want to know that you have the capacity to do more and deliberately give little because it's like, oh, I don't want to, you know, have this expectation of me. No, God knows where we are. So if what you can give is 10 minutes, give that. If what you can give is 15, 30, 45, an hour, two hours, Wherever you are, start from there and build it up. And you'll know when your spirit has expanded to where you can do more time in the place of prayer. So follow the pace of God, follow God and just let him lead you. Because yeah, if, I think if I started like, oh, I'm gonna show up for 10 hours at a time, I would have probably been done with it like within a week or so. So you wanna start with something that you can be consistent with and then build on that. Eventually you'll know when you're ready for the next level. Another thing that you need to do or that you could do, I think it might help, is to get yourself a prayer partner or a prayer group, right? Um, the Bible lets us know that, you know, two are better than one for they get a good reward for their labor. So if you're struggling with building this prayer habit, this prayer lifestyle, you could pair up with somebody else who's looking to do the same thing um, and then you guys just go together with it. So for me, it was my husband. So we were basically like, listen, we need to stop playing around. We need to build ourselves in the place of prayer. We kept doing that and it really kept both of us going because when you feel weak, you see the other person and you're like, oh, I can draw on from the strength of this person. So I think in the beginning, it helps to have a prayer partner. Eventually you guys will grow in different ways. And I think it'll be based on your calling, your consecration, um, you know, different things, your capacity, right? But initially it helps to just start with someone and then you guys can, can, you know, like support each other. And once you've gotten to that point where it's now become a part of who you are, you, you probably not need them to keep it going anymore. But in the beginning it helps. And then apart from even having that person to kind of like you know kind of holding you up it also helps to teach you how to pray because I think that that's one of the things that I struggled with when I just started praying was I as long as I'd been a Christian I realized that I didn't really know how to pray by myself like outside of like the leadership of maybe like a prayer leader or like a church or a pastor like giving the prayer charge I didn't know how to drive or lead my own prayers and so that's going to be the next video that I'm going to do is actually how to actually pray right some tips to to employ to make your prayer time you know productive so yeah start with people and you know you'll know when it you know it's time to go off on your own so the last and final tip that i'm going to share today is when you start this journey of building a life of prayer surround yourself with like-minded people if you're looking to build a lifestyle of prayer where you show up on your prayer altar every day to you know like you know pray 
if you're around people who are preaching hyper grace, like, oh, God knows us, God sees us where we are, God loves us all the same, you know, we're all going to go to heaven, da 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 you're not going to pray. That's it. So if you surround yourself with people who are able to find every scripture and every logical reason to explain to you why it is not necessary for us to pray every day because, you know, it shouldn't be uh, a routine thing. It needs to be a relationship. It needs to flow naturally. Um, You know, God knows us and, you know, whether or not we pray, he still loves us. If you're surrounding yourself with those kind of people, you're not going to pray. So if you're serious about building a lifestyle of daily prayers, you're going to need to surround yourself with people who share such, you know, like a thought process and who are headed in the same direction. That way you'll be able to hold each other up, keep each other accountable, or basically encourage each other when you start to feel um, discouraged. You're going to need to block out the noise from people who don't believe this. You, you cannot do this if you're around those people or you're seeking counsel or opinions or thoughts or support from those kind of people. It's not going to happen for you. So get like-minded people around you and you know, you'll see a lot of growth. So quickly before we wrap up the video, I'm going to summarize all the points that I mentioned. So the first point is make prayer a priority, create the time for it and stick with it. Notch it. Put it in your calendar, build your schedule around it. Second thing is choose the best time of the day for your lifestyle, for yourself. The third thing is weave it into your daily lifestyle throughout the day. Fourth point is adjusting your mindsets. See it as a relationship, something that you get to do, not something that you have to do. Next point was to build up yourself in the place of prayer. Essentially, start with where you are, start with what your capacity can accommodate and build up. The next thing was get a prayer partner or a prayer group. It helps you to build consistency and confidence. Final point that I mentioned was surrounding yourself with like-minded people. So I hope these points have helped and I can't wait to hear from you guys. Let me know what your thoughts are around you know building prayer uh, a prayer lifestyle if you have any tips for other people who may watch the video feel free to leave them in the comments below but this year we're going for it right we're going for it we're going to stand up we're going to show up in the place of prayer and we're going to effect the changes in our lives that need to happen we're not going to wait for people we're not going to be waiting for somebody to help us with this and stand with us no we're going to stand in the place of prayer and we're going to do what Jesus requires of us to see the changes that we need to see around us. So if you've made a decision in your heart and it's one of your um, goals this year or one of your resolutions this year to build yourself in a place of prayer, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my sister who's watching this video today, who has determined in her heart to build a lifestyle of prayer this year. I pray, Father, that you let your grace be with her, that you let your help be with her, and that she's able to really build this prayer lifestyle with your help because we can't do it by our power we can't do it by our might but we can do it by your holy spirit and we will so i thank you for this sister because she will testify that this year she went on this journey with you and this and this and this is you know how it turned out and what you did in her life i thank you in jesus name we pray amen so yeah i can't wait to go on this prayer journey with you guys so leave your thoughts in the comments below leave your questions um share this with anybody you think you know this will help as they build their uh their their themselves in the place of prayer and their prayer lifestyle and i can't wait to see you in the next video